Hi, this is Kim from Merging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV episode 28. So hello and welcome to today's episode. We are back and I have a fun tutorial for you today. We're, I'm going to teach you how to make an S clasp um, and making your own findings is such a great way to add a little personalization or customization to your jewelry pieces. You may find you're making a necklace or a bracelet and you can't quite find the right clasp to go with it. Well, making your own is the perfect alternative. Plus, you if you find you've run out of class or something like that, you can whip one up real quick. So, um, we'll get to the tutorial in a second, um, but I wanted to just do a little bit of, I guess they call it housekeeping. Um, up until now, I've been doing these episodes on Tuesdays, every other Tuesday. I'm going to be switching this to Thursdays, at least for the rest of the year, so I hope that's okay with you. <laughs> if not, you know, you could just watch it on t the following Tuesday. <laughs> um, and make sure you stick around for the end because I have some fun, exciting things to tell you about what's coming up. So let's get to the tutorial. So I made this double strand necklace and I needed a clasp for it. And I thought it would be nice to have my own customized clasp. Um, the necklace itself is just a series of wire wrapped bead links that I attach together and I have shown how to do that in a previous episode of ECT TV um, and you can also actually I have a book called wire wrapping for beginners and I show this technique in the book and that book is available in print or um, also in ebook form, the ebook form, it's in color and you get it immediately. The print book, you have to, of course, wait for it to get delivered to you. And it's actually in black and white. But either way, um, it's a great resource with lots of different um, techniques and tons of projects. And you can learn more about that at wirewrappingforbeginners.com. But today, I'm going to show you how to make this clasp. Um, it's just a simple S clasp, but it um, was perfect for this necklace. And so, for this clasp, we're going to be using 18 gauge, half hard, round wire. Now, the specific wire that I'm using is actually um, silver-plated copper wire that I just got, I think, at Michael's. Um, you can find it readily available. Um, it's actually 18 gauge is what it's called, It doesn't, and it's round, but it doesn't actually say it's half hard. But I've found that most of the kind of, you know, artistic copper wire is about half hard and maybe just slightly softer than half hard if you are using sterling silver. You can use any metal that you like for this, but the 18 gauge I find is probably what you want to use um, just for the stability of it. You will also need wire cutters. You will need chain nose pliers round nose pliers and you're probably going to want a second pair of pliers um, just to kind of help you do some wrapping um, which a favorite of mine is the bent nose pliers but any kind of pliers that you know are flat on the inside um, would work. You can use round nose pliers um, if you only hold the wire by the very tip when you're wrapping and then you cut that part off because it will make a mark in your wire. Um, you'll need a hammer. I'm going to be using a chasing hammer, which will flatten the clasp. Um, you could instead use a rawhide or um, nylon hammer, which will just harden the wire and not actually flatten it. Either way is fine. And then you need just like a, a steel block, anvil, um, whatever you have in that regard. Um, and you 
my like a roller. Now I had a question about the roller I use, and um, this is a metal roller. It has cork on the back. Um, it's stainless steel. It's the brand name is Westcott. I don't know where I actually got this. Um, roller. It is made in the USA, and I think that's why somebody was asking. Um, but I probably got it, I would imagine, from a bead supply place. I think maybe it was a free gift <laughs> with an order. Um, so maybe check out Fire Mountain Beads, because I or Fire Mountain Gems is what they're called. Um, I think that might be where I got it. Um, or, you know, maybe you could look up just the Westcott. And I also had a question about my wire cutters, and I adore my wire cutters, and I love them. And they are also made in the United States. And the brand name is Tronix, and no, I'm not getting paid by them, but I do love these wire cutters. They have all kinds of tools. Um, they are uh, more of a, I guess I'd say, high end. They're worth every single penny and eventually um, hopefully all my tools will be Tronics because they just are great. They feel great, they cut great, they work great. Um, so that's what I have. Um, but you can use any wire cutters you have. I started out for years just using my dad who is um, into electronics using his wire cutters and they worked forever until I kind of got another pair which kind of fell apart and I've had this pair for quite a while now and they're great. Um, but if you're just starting, you use whatever you have um, and whatever you can afford and then as you see what you use the most then you can kind of update and upgrade the, the tools that you have. So that, that's my little suggestion. Alright, so let's get started with this clasp. Alright, so to get started I'm going to cut approximately four inches of wire. Um, you may not need quite that much but it's always better to have a little bit more um, than you need. Um, and so then on one end we're going to actually make a wire wrap loop which um, if you've seen other videos of mine you've done this before um, and I have a little trick where I have a mark on my pliers um, I just do it for sharpie so that all my wire wrap loops are the same size so I'm just lining up to that mark and we're just going about a third of the way down on the wire and we're just going to wrap the wire around the pliers. So we have a loop and this loop is not centered um, you know how you would like it on the top of the loop but I'll show you what I do. There's lots of ways to do this. You can fix it while you still have the round nose pliers in, in the circle but I do it this way. Um, I grab my chain nose pliers and then as I make the first wrap around this with the short wire around the long wire I pull the long wire straight and then the loop is centered on top. Now I'm going to switch hands and then this is where your um, bent nose or whatever other pliers you're going to use come in handy. Um, or you could just use your hand if, if you can and we're just going to make a few more wraps. And I find that 18 gauge can be, you know, a little bit difficult to wrap, so using pliers is always helpful. Um, but you can do it however you want. And if you have extra wire, you can trim it off with your wire cutters. And then just make sure the end is tucked in. And I like to do this with my chain nose pliers. Just sort of go around like this. And then just make sure everything is, your wraps are nice and tight. If you didn't wrap them tight, you can just take your pliers and kind of push them together. And make sure everything's straight. And you have your wire wrap loop. So now we want to just have just about, you know, an inch and a half or so of wire left. So if you have extra, just 
trim off the extra. You know, and it depends. You might want to make a larger S class, and so you might want to leave a little bit more. And now we're going to just make a decorative loop on the end. Um, so I'm holding the wire in my round nose pliers. Um, the loop, we're going to make the loops so that they are um, going the same direction. So you want to hold the wire so the top of the wire is at the top of the pliers but not poking through so you can run your finger over. And then I'm going to wrap the wire with my left thumb while twisting my right wrist away. And you just go as far as your wrist will let you. And then readjust keeping this wire in the same spot on your pliers and then just do the same thing to finish the loop. And it should look like a P. And then you just simply are going to fold this in half um, using a big part of your round nose pliers. And you're going to have a little, it's not going to be quite in the middle, you're going to have a little more room, um, a little more length on the bottom part than on the top part. And then you just kind of bend this around your round nose pliers. So that's basically it. And then you can just take your chain nose pliers and just make sure everything is flat. And, you know, shaped how you want it to be. Alright, so now we just are going to hammer this. Um, this won't lay flat, um, so we're just going to hammer kind of this part. You kind of just hold it off to the side where the wraps are. And then we just hammer. And so that part of the clasp is done. So now we just have to make the other end. So quite often when I'm making jewelry um, and I'm making my own S-class, I would just use a wire wrapped bead link um, to for the other end, so it looks pretty cool. Um, but I'm going to show you how to kind of make an eye hook for the other side. Um, it's really simple, it's kind of just like how you start this end and we're just going to make, instead of just one, we're going to make two loops. So, again, you need about, um, about four, five inches. I'm actually going to go about four and a half inches. And I'm cutting. And then, just like before, we're going to make a wire wrap loop. So, we're just going around. And now I'm straightening and making a few wraps and I'm just trimming off the excess and then making sure the end is tucked in, it's pushed in and then make sure this is all straight. Alright, so now on the other side though we want to make a bigger loop so I am just going to Hold this, and it's just a little bit above the um, the loop we just made, and we're doing exactly the same thing, except for it's going to be bigger, so that the clasp can easily, you know, go into that hole. And then you just wrap the wire around until you meet your other wraps. And then I'm just going to switch hands here and do the final wrap or so with my bent nose pliers. And then I have a little bit poking out, so I'm going to use my chain nose to get that in. Make sure everything is nice and straight.
So that is that end. And then you can just hammer um, the bigger loop if you like. And then you have your clasp. And now you can use this on all kinds of jewelry. Um, like I showed you my necklace from the beginning. You know, or bracelets, or really, you know, anything you choose. So, have fun! So, what I wanted to tell you is, in eight weeks, which is January 5th, I am going to be starting the next round of Rediscover Your Creativity through Making Jewelry, which actually I'm renaming to Rediscover Your Creativity and Make Jewelry. <laughs> Very simple change, but a little bit easier to say. So on January 5th will be week one, and so you have eight weeks <laughs> to get signed up, um, and I'll have all the information in the show notes if you come over to KimberlyKohler.com of how you can get yourself registered. But for the eight weeks leading up, every Monday, I am going to be having the Creativity Countdown. <laughs> So every Monday, there's going to be a post on my website um, about creativity. Now, this is mostly not going to be about jewelry making, but what I find in my own life is the more creative you are overall, the more creative you can get with your jewelry making, the more ideas you have, um, and skills, of course, are involved with jewelry making, and you learn skills on Thursdays with these ECT TV episodes, um, but on Mondays there will be a blog post, sometimes it will be a video, sometimes it won't be a video. There will be great creative ideas for you to start feeling more creative, creative um, each week. So look for that starting Monday, November 10th, and um, for the eight weeks leading up to Rediscover Your Creativity. Now, if you're interested in the course, you can find the information. Um, on the on this week's show notes from this episode at KimberlyKohler.com um, and also in a couple short weeks I will be releasing the print book that goes along with this e-course as a separate thing you can buy and purchase separately. So if you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, uh, subscribe to my newsletter. You get a great 14-day e-course, um, which is an intro to jewelry making, which includes a lot of wire wrapping skills, which I am very fond of. So I'll see you over at KimberlyKohler.com, and I'll see you in a couple weeks.